Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about two physical uh, apparatus that the ancient Chinese had for aiding in doing uh, counting and arithmetic. These are counting rods and boards and the abacus. So let's uh, first talk about uh, the counting rods and the counting board. Now, these are a fascinating physical aid to representing numbers and performing calculations. Now, I did an earlier video on this on Chinese numerals um, from the week one playlist. And you probably need to go to that first if you haven't watched it yet. So if you haven't seen that one yet, just stop this video, go to that video, watch it, and then come back. Okay, if you're still with me, I'm assume that you've already seen that. So you know the basic idea of their Chinese using the uh, counting rods to represent numerals. Uh, they were able to represent natural numbers and decimal fractions at base 10 using the wooden, wooden rods. At first, they were probably made out of bone. Uh, later on, they're made out of wood. I guess today you could use something else. Uh, plastic, or I'm going to, even going to show you a virtual version here in a little bit. Uh, there were red for positive, black for negative. Uh, they were round and later triangular for positive and rectangular uh, in shape for negative. But the rods are placed on a counting board, which is basically rectangles that are drawn in the sand or maybe on a mat or on an actual board that you might set on a table. And by arranging them, as discussed in the other video, you can get uh, numbers represented that way. So, for example, here you can see in these little circles here, this is what in the West is known as Pascal's Triangle. The ancient Chinese knew about that many centuries before Pascal. But, of course, on this diagonal here and out here, the outside of the triangle, those all are one. Here's a two. The way Pascal's triangles works, if you add these together, you get three. Now, notice adding those together is just physically moving the uh, the rods around. Okay, and so adding these two gives you three. Adding one in there makes four, and so forth. When you put five together, you exchange five horizontal uh, rods for a vertical one. That cuts down on the number of rods you need. So instead of having, you know, as many as nine rods, in a place at once, you can cut that down to not having more than, well, one vertical and four horizontal, so more, no more than five uh, rods at a time. So that's uh, that's six. Vertical and red represents five, and the horizontal and red represents one, and so forth. And you can see uh, at least one version of the rods there. You could even put fractions. Basically, like we do fractions today, you put a, we put a symbol for a numerator and a symbol for denominator. We draw a horizontal line between them, for example, one-seventh here, and they did the same thing just without the horizontal line. Here's a symbol for, um, this is actually a symbol for uh, seven here. Uh, it's basically rotated uh 90 degrees from this, the two vertical ones represent one and the horizontal one represents five. So that's seven, that's just one on the top. So you could use that to represent fractions. But better than that, uh, this is actually a place value system, base 10. Um, and you can actually use this to uh, represent uh, numerals uh, in decimal form. So terminating decimals can be represented this way, uh, as long as you have enough decimal places on your board. And decimal approximations for other numbers, uh, non-terminating decimals, uh, either repeating or, or irrational numbers, can be decimal approximations can be used there. And operations then are carried out by physically moving the rods around. We'll kind of see how to do this here in just a minute. Uh, the This uh, device was then exported to Japan. You see a picture here of some Japanese folks with a counting mat or counting board there with some counting rods on it. And it actually stayed in use in Japan a little longer than it did in China. 
here is a link to a GeoGebra activity that I've made up, which is a virtual version of a Chinese or Japanese uh, county board. So let's let's go to that and see what we've got here. Let me open that up in the. Uh, let me pull it up here and go up to here and uh, let's see. Go up to here, open in the app. So here we have a virtual county board. We have some rods. Each one of these is an individual thing. And they can be clicked on and just physically moved around just like they were actual sticks that we had. We have some tools here for creating some extra vertical rods, as many as we need, or horizontal ones as needed. Uh, we can make some that are red if we need those. And so we can use red and black. Actually, it really doesn't matter which one you call positive and which one's negative as long as you're you're clear about what you mean. Um, so I think they actually use, well, I think the literature I saw was red was positive, black, negative, but it may be the other way around. But it doesn't matter just as long as you have those. Now, so for example, we have um, we have this. So, so basically here we have uh, three here. This is two, but two groups of ten. This is a five, and two more is is a seven groups of a hundred, and a five and one more that's six groups of a thousand, and so forth. So this is six thousand seven hundred twenty-three in our number system. These are uh, let's see, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. This is three thousand, thirty thousand. Well. 30, um, yeah, 37,684. Uh, now, suppose we wanted to just add those numbers. Really, all you have to do is you just, you just put, are putting these things together. I'll, I'll move them up here. You're just moving all these things up. And physically moving the sticks around. Now, um, and you can really start at either end. If we start here, what we're going to do is one, two, three, four, five. Those five are going to be exchanged for horizontal, horizontal rod there. And they would have arranged those uh, kind of like this. Okay, and we pull these up. That's a that one's a five. All right, one, two, three, four, five. That's five, and that five all together can be regrouped for one in the next level, or this could be regrouped as a five, and the two fives regrouped. So I need to actually grab all of these guys right here and just delete them or get them out, get them out of the way. And that's replaced by one at the next level. At the next level, a one is a vertical. So let's just bring a vertical one over here. Bring these up. Okay, right away there's two fives. See that? So those two fives can be uh, taken away and replaced by one at the next level. At the next level, one is a horizontal. It, it alternates between place values what which one is a one and which one's a five okay and we bring this up these are singles uh, but these two this one and this one represent uh, two fives so that's going to be ten which is one one single at the next level at the next level singles are vertical Let 
me just kind of straighten up a little bit. And now we have the number represented. Now, as long as we've got the uh, Uh, as long as we've got the little grid here, it's easy to see that we don't necessarily need a placeholder because the grid will take care of it. If we leave this without a grid, it's kind of useful to put a placeholder, which ultimately they replaced with a, with a little circle. Like that, which is really exactly, or almost exactly what we, uh, <clears throat> what we have for our zero. So they might have written the number this way on paper without the grid. Or, again, if they had the grid, then they don't really need the, the placeholder. And so there's the, there's the answer. So you can uh, experiment with this. You can, you can uh, do subtractions if you'd like. Um, let's say we've got... Uh, let's... Um, I was usually put up top, actually. Sometimes uh, in their in their notation, if they had one sticking out like that at the top, they would might actually have made it shorter in the uh, when they wrote it down. But they're actually out there with the actual sticks. They you know these sticks could potentially be all the same size. They would just be moving them around. Actually, technically, I guess it doesn't really matter how long they are at all. Okay, so let's say we have let's say we have this. Yeah, let's just get rid of a couple things here. And say we want to subtract, we might want some red ones to be negatives. So so we have some negatives there, maybe another one here. Um Some horizontal ones. Okay, so say we start with this and we want to do the subtraction. So the reds are, are same thing as adding a negative. So in this though I'm using the color scheme that red is negative at the moment. So if we do that, here's the problem. And we want to subtract here. Well, it's pretty easy. This things that come in pairs like that are going to just cancel each other out. So you can physically see that going on. Now here we have a problem because there's more here, uh, more down here than there is here. If we wanted to, we could cancel out what we've got like that and this and this. And this, but there's still this one to take care of. So what we need to do is bring this one apart over here. And when we do, it becomes, well, ultimately it becomes 10 of them, right? So there's five. Uh, I'm sorry, that's one. This is, this is, uh, this is five. It's usually to put at the top. And then there's five more. One, two, three, four, four, five, and now one of those can be canceled out now with this, leaving nine at that level. And then this will cancel with this one, but we have to do the same thing here. We've got to bring one of these across and when it comes across, it again becomes 10 singles or five and five singles. And then one of, let's see. Whoops, I've got them going the wrong direction, sorry. Got to alternate each each one, right? 
So a five, let's see, these are, that's a five. And then the singles are going up and down. One, two, three, four, and there's a fifth one. So then we can just cancel these out in pairs. Now, I'm a little slow at this, but I think you can see that someone who did this very much could get, uh, very often could get pretty good at this and work out the additions and subtractions pretty quickly. And the nice thing about it, it's an actual, you actually physically do it. You can actually, you know, like when we add one and two, you don't really put the symbols one and two together to actually make a three, but here you actually do uh, do that physically. So uh, that you have that available. You can, can mess around with that if you want a little bit as well. Okay, going back to our uh, slideshow. Let's see what's happening here. The next thing that we have is we talk about the abacus. Now the abacus uh, actually replaced and came from the counting boards and the rods. They were replaced by the abacus. And one of the things that kind of indicates that that may be the case is the word abacus comes basically from sand tray indicating that this device arose from the using the counting rods in the sand using instead of a board actually just drawing your little frame um, in the in this in the sand or, or the dust it could be dust tray or sand tray so uh, of course there's no dust or sand in the actual abacus so the traditional Chinese abacus has parallel rods for each uh, place value you can see a picture here so this may be for ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and so forth. The rod is divided into two sections. The top part has two beads. The bottom part has uh, five beads. Each one in the bottom represents, each bead in the bottom represents one of that group. So that represents one, that represents one ten, that represents uh, one one hundred, that represents one group of a thousand. The ones at the top represent five. That's kind of like the the rods that were turned the other direction. And so uh, that bead represents five. That bead represents five groups of 10. This one represents five groups of 100 or 500 and so forth. Now they're counted if they're slid to the middle. Okay, so these are basically not counted down here. These up here are not counted. What's counted are these here. So what, what uh, number do we have represented? Well, here we have a one. Then we have four and five more is a nine, so it's one nine. Here's another nine. Here is a uh, seven, five and two more is seven, and then zero, 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 zero in our place value. So that's 199,700,000 uh, is represented by that. We can also use the same thing both in the counting boards and in the abacus <clears throat> to represent decimals, all we have to do is just indicate where the, the decimal point goes. Like if you could, you could put a decimal, some symbol here, uh, you could put something up next to it or just, just remember it or put a, put a mark on there to represent where the decimal goes. So for example, if the decimal went right here between the fourth and fifth one from the right, then all of these would be zero past the decimal point. And then this would be, that would be, uh, well, we get the same digits, they would just be a different place value. So this would be 119970. One, one, or if the decimal place was, say, right here, in between these two, this would be 19.97. Just depends on where you put the decimal place. Beads are moved toward or away from the center to add or subtract values, respectively. And exchanges are made by exchanging one bead at the top for five in the bottom, or the other direction. You can also make an additional exchange by exchanging two top beads for one bead, one bottom bead in the next level up, or uh, exchanging one top bead and five bottom beads for one at the next level up. And those exchanges go in either direction. One way is useful for addition. The other way is useful for subtraction. Now, if you look at it, there, there are actually more beads that are necessary here. 
um, and why they do that? Well, if you put both of these beads down, that's 10 in the top. If you move all those up, you get 15. So you could actually represent up to 15 in one digit. So, I mean, you could possibly use this for up to uh, base 15 representations. But um, why are they that way? Well, it's because it makes calculations a little bit easier if you've got some extra beads because you can temporarily have more beads than are necessary in a particular place value before you do your exchanges, and that can be, uh, that can be useful in making calculations. However, there is a simplified version this one down here is a simplified version, and it only has exactly how many beads you need to have it uh, uh, represent a number. So these top represent five and the bottom represent one. So if you notice, the, you can only represent uh, zero to nine in a particular digit, which is really all you need to do. However, the, the, uh, this is not as easy to work with as the other version, just because um, it's a little harder to make the exchanges. Um, the colorful one on the right is an even more simplified version. And this one only has, there's no uh, two groups, so there's no beads that represent five, so you just have to have 10 beads in one row. And when you get all 10 beads, you can exchange it for one at the next level up. This one is uh, colorful and made like this. It was probably created to teach some elementary school students about place value and it can be a good tool for that uh, and in fact you could actually use all of these for that for that purpose this is probably a little simpler to talk about place value at first but then you could graduate to this version or better yet the version here and practice some uh, help develop your number sense by working through those it turns out that, that there are some folks who are very practiced at, at using an abacus, uh, like, especially like the one on the previous slide, and they can perform additions and subtractions just lightning fast, basically faster than you can type them in your calculator. Um, and they can even use them to do other operations like multiplication, division, and in fact, even some other operations as well. So there's a couple of really cool uh, physical manipulative devices that the ancient Chinese were able to work uh, to do, and uh, they were able to uh, use these to develop a number system that was essentially one of, if not the first, really true base 10 place value system. There's some question and mark whether they got the idea from the Indians, or the in Indians got it from them, or if they developed it uh, independently. But uh, in any event, this is a, a nice little device or two, two devices for, for doing computations. Uh, I remember seeing a, seeing a uh, cartoon at one time, and it was uh, in the, it's, it uh, had an uh, abacus like this, and it was behind glass, and there were computers in the room, and it says, in case of power failure, break the glass. So they could, they could go to a, an abacus if their computers failed on them. All right, so we'll move on with our next video.